So another thing I want to explain before we go into the example is when I want to when why when I try to obtain an exclusive lock, there must not be any shared lock acquired on that value. Does that make sense? So, so they are linked actually together. And the opposite, if I want to obtain a shared lock, there must not be any exclusive lock obtained. So these two are exactly the opposite of each other. So you can have, as let's say, for example, I have like seven shared lock on, on the balance on a certain value. That means nobody can acquire an exclusive lock on that value. So nobody can edit it as a, as, a, as a sense, you know. So that's the idea. Read or write log. That makes sense. Let's jump to an example, guys. All right. So here I have three people. Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Alice is red. Bob is blue. Charlie is green. And we're going to start. This is the timeline from left to right. And then we're going to start with Alice started the transaction uh, trying to deposit a $200 on her account right so in order to do that she needs obviously to do an update statement right to do that you need to acquire an exclusive log and guess what she's the only one seems she that she's the only one that is connected right now so she she'll basically acquire tries to acquire an exclusive log and guess what it succeeds because nobody else acquired any shared log so they're good you know, you just like move, move on, and and she acquired the exclusive lock. Now she's guaranteeing that, hey, I'm I'm on about edited, and that's good. That's good because I don't want people reading bad value, right? Because I'm I'm about to update this balance, so d don't ever try to read my balance right now because it's gonna change. If you read it and make decisions based on that, it's gonna be bad, right? So you're gonna acquire that, and then it says, okay, I'm gonna deposit. So the next transaction is essentially transaction going to commit and then she's going to increase her balance by 200 very, very quick and then commit the transaction and then her transaction finished. Right? You know, it's just that short period of time. And then she turned around Alice and then starts another long running transaction. Look at that. It's a, it's a, it's a long transaction. Looks like it, right? It's a job reporting job on her balance. She's doing reading a lot. She's just doing reading operations. So a read operation is acquiring shared lock. So what she says here, says, hey guys, I am going to acquire a shared lock on my balance account. So don't try to change it, please. Don't try to mess with it. Don't try to update it because you can't because I just acquired a shared lock. So nobody can acquire an exclusive lock on her account now because she just had a, a shared lock there. Okay, makes sense. So okay, she she's doing her thing or reading all these tables and doing the reporting. So very long transaction. When Bob started another reporting job on his account, so that's a completely different thing, right? So they acquired a, a shared lock. Bob acquired a shared lock on his account, so on this value, while while Alice acquired a shared lock a shared lock on this value. Makes sense. All right, so that succeeded. We have a lock for Bob. We have a lo shared lock for Alice. And then we're continuing. So something is going to happen here. What is the green thing? What is going on? Charlie, Charlie, what are you going to do? Charlie wants to do a transfer to Bob's account. Bob, it's your lucky day, dude. Bob's account attempt to obtain an exclusive lock, but fails. Why? Because he want to do a transfer, right, from his account of a $300, I didn't write it there, but trying to do a $300 a transfer from Charlie's account, from his account, to Bob's account. So in order to do that, he needs to acquire an exclusive log. So he's saying, man, I want to update that. Guys, I don't want it to change this, so, but uh, we try to acquire an exclusive log on Bob's account. And he says, oh, fails. Why? Because Bob has already acquired a shared log. He's doing something. He's doing his thing. Bob is doing his job. He's reading all these tables. He's doing a thing. So he asked us to 
to lo uh, to create this shared log so nobody changes his account so guess what Charlie just failed his transaction he cannot do that and that's actually good we don't want uh, people editing while other people are reading it's just uh, so that's just dangerous especially with banking systems so guess what after a while bob completes his transaction his job uh, his reading job and he says you know what i'm done so he releases that shared log so he's no longer acquiring shared log afterwards charlie attempts again to acquire exclusive log and this time he succeeds he says okay i'm gonna since i just succeeded let me quickly <laughs> go ahead and acquire the exclusive log and then commit the 300 bucks from charlie's account to bob right so that's the general the differences between exclusive lock and shared lock and there's an another example that i didn't mention here is like while while there is exclusive lock nobody can read so you can you can think of this that let's jump to the, the disadvantage and advantages of all this thing is shared lock and exclusive lock and in, was introduced to to ensure consistency in the system as you can see right i want to be consistent when i read this value i wanted this value to always be the same oh, that's a shared lock exclusive when i want to attempt when i want to write something i want nobody to be connected right so next time they connect, they read the latest value. And exclusive uh, lock and shared lock in general, they are very useful to obtain consistency, especially with a banking first. And th the second thing is, is with configurations. If like you have a central configuration system and you're, it's a critical configuration system, obviously, and you're making changes to it, you don't want others reading stale configuration. You want people to, you want to kick people out from the connection uh, from the database and only let them read when you are done editing essentially right so you, you so this this way all the clients will always read the latest and greatest configuration value so that's one of the benefits that the disadvantages of that obviously concurrency suffers as a result you can see like uh, people there are chances where you get failures obviously all the time especially in banking system you can see if you go to banking america sometimes you you can see those grayed out you can do any transactions at, at at night sometimes like at midnight because they're doing their job reporting and they're doing all this shared lock so you can't really obtain exclusive lock at that time but there are times that you cannot do your transactions the concurrency cannot be achieved because of these locks but at the same time they are very critical to ensure consistency. All right, guys, uh, this is the.